the next type of rock that we have to cover is the metamorphic rock what is the metamorphic rock so this is formed by the process known as the metamorphosis so here you can see the limestone is converted into marble with the help of lithification diagenesis first and then impact of very high temperature and the high pressure as well so whenever there would be presence of high temperature and high pressure so the metamorphosis or the transformation will take place and instead of making of the sedimentary rock a new type of rock is formed which is called as the metamorphic rock the metamorphic rock can be created with the help of sedimentary rock as well as from the igneous rocks as well so here limestone is a type of sedimentary rock now this is converted into metamorphic rock which is marble similarly sandstone is the sedimentary rock converted into quartzite which is metamorphic rock sand is converted into slate which is metamorphosis conglomerate is converted into gneiss and granite is also converted into gneiss which is again a type of metamorphic rocks so this is the metamorphosis and these all are the example of the metamorphic rocks so I hope this clear to you remember all the examples examples are very important here again i am repeating do not skip the examples remember all the things whatever written in this slide is all the things are important in the perspective of your examiners so this is the metamorphic rocks properties two properties you can find out in the metamorphic rock the very first property is called as bending bending sometimes minerals of the different group are arranged into dark and light alternate bend which is called as bending so suppose this is your rock and here one layer is formed another layer is formed another layer is formed and there is one layer of the dark color then one layer of the light color then one layer of the again dark color one layer of the light color so some type of same type of arrangement you can find out in the metamorphic rocks so this quality or property is called as bending then we have another property that is lineation so during metamorphism in some rocks minerals get arranged in lines or layers now here this is not about the color because of the minerals the different lines are created one line of this one line of the another mineral one line of another mineral and all will look different these lines will look different so this would be called as the lineation property of the metamorphic rock so this is bending bending of the dark and light dark and light type of arrangement lineation is the linear formation or arrangement of the different minerals that you can see in the metamorphic rocks that is lineation so i hope this is clear to you these are two are the properties of the metamorphic rock bending and lineage then the next thing we have to start here in this particular chapter is the minerals so here are the minerals that you can see in your screen the elements in the earth crust are rarely found exclusively but are usually combined with other elements so as i have told you multiple elements will come together and these elements will form the minerals and the combination of these multiple elements which are combined together because elements you can rarely found exclusively always they are in the attached form and the attached form of the multiple elements is termed as the minerals so if you look at the earth composition by weight percentage so this we have already discussed one time in the first unit again i am discussing here because this is the very important thing that is the oxygen very huge amount of the oxygen you will find out in the earth crust then silica then aluminium then iron then calcium then sodium potassium and then magnesium highest amount is of the oxygen 47% almost 27.928% is of the silica 8.1% aluminum 5% iron 3.6% calcium 2.8% sodium 2.6 potassium and 2.1% magnesium then if you look at the whole earth composition so that is poc magnes all so poc magnes cal so iron oxygen silica magnesium nickel sulfur and then calcium and aluminum so this is for the whole earth this is for only the earth crust so whenever there is an examination any question you can find out see the question carefully whether it is asking about the whole earth or it is asking about only the earth crust in every consecutive year you can find out question from this particular section either 
from this one or from this one. So that is the minerals or the elements you can find out in the earth. Then if you look at the all types of minerals, all the types of minerals are divided in two groups. The first group is called as the silicate mineral. 90% of that all mineral is silicate mineral. Then we have the non-silicate minerals. Non-silicate minerals are only combining or containing the contributing the 10% of all the minerals. The silicate minerals are the examples you can see here, feldspar, quartz, olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, mica. The first two are the most dominant type of minerals that you can find out in the earth crust. Then next are the olivine and pyroxene and very less amount of amphibole mica you can find out. And these non-silicate minerals are only contributing 10% of all the minerals present in the earth surface. So these are the hematite, the ore of the iron. Similarly, we have the magnetite. Hematite is FeO, magnetite is Fe2O3, dolomite, calcium carbonate and the magnesium carbonate, galena. Galena is the ore of the lead. This is important. So with the help of processing of galena, you can get the lead. And lead is used for the multiple purposes in the industries. So for that, we get the lead from the galena. Then we have cinnabar. Cinnabar is the ore of mercury. So if you want mercury that, that we widely used in the thermometers, right? So that mercury is generally processed or you can get it with the help of processing of the cinnabar ore. So this is a mercury ore and that is also a type of non-silicate mineral. So this is the types of minerals you can find out in the earth surface, silicate mineral and non-silicate mineral. One by one, we have to discuss these minerals. So very first mineral uh, that we have to start with the silicate mineral, these 90%. So first mineral we will start with feldspar. So here you can see the feldspar. So 50% of the mineral in the earth crust is feldspar. And feldspar is the most abundant type of mineral that you can find out in the earth surface. Then the feldspar can be also divided in three types, mainly find out. So first type here that you can find out the type of feldspar in the earth surface is potassium feldspar, which is also known as orthoclase. Orthoclase is the name of the potassium feldspar. The formula is KLSI3O8. Then we have the sodium feldspar, just replace this K with the sodium. Now this is called as the albite and this is NaAlSI3O8. Then we have the calcium feldspar, which is called as the anorthite, that is CaAl2Si2O8. So these all threes are the main types of feldspar that you can find out in the earth crust. Then we have the granite magma, so that type of magma through which granite is formed. On that also K feldspar and quartz you can find out. And if it is basaltic type of magma, so you can mainly find out olivine, pyroxene, and plagioclase. So the main thing is that the granite is made of the feldspar and quartz, while the basalt is made from the olivine and pyroxene. So that's all you have to remember. What is the plagioclase here? Plagioclase is the combination of the sodium plus calcium feldspar, which is albite and anorthite, you can see. So now again, whatever written in this slide, all the things are important. They can ask you a question from anything. Like what is the name of the sodium feldspar? That is albite. What is the formula of albite? NaL. NaAlSi3O8, through what basaltic rocks are formed? So that is found with the help of olivine, pyroxene, and plagioclase. Through what granitic rocks are formed? So those are found with the help of potassium, feldspar, and quartz. What is the most abundant mineral that you can find out in the earth crust? So that is the feldspar itself. So any kind of questions can be made from this slide. So remember everything present in this slide. So this is all about the feldspar. The next thing that we have to discuss is the second most abundant type, that is the quartz. Quartz is what? Quartz is nothing, that is silicon oxide, SiO2. And it contributes almost 13% of all the minerals present in the earth crust. And this used to make the electrical appliances, which are heat resistant, because quartz have the property of the heat resistance. So all the quartz is silicon oxide, and this is the second most abundant type of mineral you can find out. Then we have olivine and pyroxene. So both are ferromagnesium silicate mineral. So both I have included in one point, olivine and pyroxene. Both are ferromagnesium type of silicate mineral. These are the rich in the mantle side of the earth, not in the earth crust, but in the mantle. 
the majority of the element or the uh, mineral you can find out that is olivine and pyroxene. Olivine is Mg2SO4, Fe2SO4 combination, while pyroxene is magnesium silicon oxide and iron silicon oxide, MgSiO3, FeSiO3. Then, olivine and pyroxene are primary type of minerals which are mainly formed. If any other type of mineral is formed by the transformation of the primary type of mineral from the olivine and pyrogen, so that is known as the secondary type of mineral. The secondary type of mineral which is formed with the help of olivine, that is called as the serpentine. Then secondary type of mineral which is formed with the pyrogen, that is called as the agite or enstatite. So these names are also important. These are the examples of secondary minerals which are formed with the help of olivine and pyroxene. So now olivine and pyroxene also we have completed. Next type of the mineral that we have to cover is the amphibole. So amphibole is a double chain mineral. So this is made up of the aluminium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, iron, silicon oxide, all the things are present in the amphibole. So this is just a mixture of the all things and it is fibrous in nature. So fibers would be present in this mineral. So that's why fibrous nature is given to the amphibole. And the secondary mineral which is formed with the help of amphibole that is horn blade and actinolite. Both are the secondary type of mineral which are formed by the amphibole. And sixth type of mineral that we have to discuss is the mica. So 4% of the all crust, earth crust is made up of this mica. Mica is also called a seed mineral because this is formed in different seeds, such kind of seeds. These are what? These are the mica. And this is again mixture of aluminum, potassium, iron, magnesium, silicon, oxide. And these also used in the electrical appliances because these are also heat resistant. The two type of micas are the black mica and white mica. The black mica is called as the biotite and the white mica is called as the muscovite. So these are the two types of main mica. One is black mica, B for B, and another one is the white mica, which is muscovite. I hope this is clear to you all.